Best non-conference matchup of 2019, as stated by Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Oh, yeah, that's me, the voice of college football. Yes, we've got our last and final thoughts on LSU taking on Texas. Uh, the Tigers come in uh, number six in the country, 1-0, and and the Longhorns number nine in the country, where I believe they finished a last season after their Sugar Bowl win. Texas, even in Austin, at home, a six-and-a-half-point underdog against the Bayou Bengals. This is their first regular season matchup since way back in 1954. Texas has dominated the series, but again, 1954. They also played in the 2003 Cotton Bowl. Stats from game one, almost meaningless. Uh, once we get three, four games deep into the season with a few quality opponents under each team's belts, then we look at numbers on the season to tell us a few trends in that direction, but both were very impressive in week one. Texas uh, mauled Louisiana Tech uh, 45-14. to They were up 38 nothing like that. And for LSU, they were all over Georgia Southern at 55-3. to That's a game that LSU would always win handily, except for Troy 2017, but LSU would always win handily. But 55-3 to is kind of out of the ballpark of what we saw in the later years under Les Miles or the first few years of Ed Ogeron. This is an LSU team that, if that's any indication, putting their foot down and showing that they might be a national championship contender, first in the SEC, of course, but if you contend in the SEC, you contend across the nation. Joe Burrow was almost perfect in his outing against Georgia Southern, 23-27 passing, okay? It was Georgia Southern. But according to Pro Football Focus, Kendall Vildor and Moncabian Brown are two of the top cornerbacks in the country. Uh, one of them's a first team all Sun Belt Conference, and the other one, number two in a lot of the ratings that uh, rank quarterbacks, again, according to Pro Football Focus, a very respected organization that rates collegiate players. Joe Burrow also, despite a pretty pedestrian 2018 performance top to bottom, Finished really hot. 15 touchdowns, one pick, 70% completion percentage in his final portion of the games last season. Five games of the season. All right. On the Texas side, Todd Orlando is going to bring it. He is known to bring blitz packages from all over the place, and he's probably cooked up a few in the offseason just for Mr. Burrow. And I think an underrated element in Joe Burrow's game is his ability. Of course, we're looking at Sam Ellinger as the mobile bulldozer from the backfield, the fullback, Tim Tebow type, with a little bit more speed at quarterback. But Burrow can take off and run. The defense needs to respect him as well. Sadiq Charles is back after missing last week. Left tackle, that's going to be key for Burrow. Sadiq Charles is a quality, quality player. All right. In these kind of matchups, and the reason I loved this uh, matchup in the offseason, it was about athletes in space. It was about just pure athletes all over the place on both sides of the football for both teams. Uh, NFL draft kind of players in the first three rounds. It was about tradition and name brand and conference pride. It was about all that, but about athletes as well, especially the wide receivers going up against the DBs. And you've got it right here. Jamar Chase, Harris Marshall, Justin Jefferson. Jefferson, of course, the, the guy who caught 54 balls, doesn't necessarily have a high, high elite ceiling, but he's a very productive player. Chase and Marshall could be elite players soon, but they got to show they can do it on the big stage and be productive. Jalen Green is Texas's number one corner. They have some depth issues elsewhere at corner. Well-fortified at safety are the Longhorns with, of course, Caden Stearns. He's a star. Uh, Brandon Jones, Chris Brown, uh, Texas secondary has been as so well recruited in recent years, as good as any in the country, even though once we get to the LSU defense, you know what I think about them. If you've heard me in the past and speaking of that, uh, we had a, a matchup. We can't just give you enough previews here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. I just had to jump on here and give my final thoughts, um, late, 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 late Friday night, but we were on with Steve Helwick early in the week to give the Texas LSU uh, angles from there. So please check out that video as well. At running back, LSU is basically five deep, and it was difficult to get a feel for who was going to get the ball most. 
uh, because they were playing Georgia Southern and up so big, so early. Um, of course, uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire is uh, the most productive back coming back with the most experience from last season, averaging 4.5 yards per carry, he had the big game against Georgia, uh, hitting up the Bulldogs for 145 on the ground. Leonard Fournette, okay, Chris Curry, they have played some. And then we've got the superstar freshman coming into the collegiate ranks in Tyrion Davis. And you got John Emery. So they carried it three to five times last week. But those are the guys with the high ceilings, the five stars, the high four star prospects. And I'm going to be intrigued to see if they go conservative in regards to an approach in terms of experience on the road, uh, ball security and right assignment, protecting Burrow when they keep the back in with Edwards Hilaire, or do they feature one of the kids? And Texas's front seven is fairly inexperienced. There's only 25 starts in the front seven and 12 of those by Malcolm Roach. So there's a lot on his shoulders and LSU may have an advantage here. And of course, we're going to get the full throttle look at John Brady's new LSU spread offense. On the Texas side, you got Sam Ellinger at quarterback. I think he's one of the very best. He has gone from runner who was shaking in the passing game to a very polished, pre precision passer as well, and still a threat in the running game. And both quarterbacks will not run out of bounds consistently. They're going to lower a shoulder and take on a safety or even a linebacker. They're both tough, tough, tough. Ellinger, a little bit more of a threat in the running game, and they're going to need that. First to the outside threats, Colin Johnson in particular, uh, the best uh, and most consistent and most productive Texas wide receiver going up against tremendous cornerbacks and Derek Stingley and Christian Fulton. Christian Fulton has all kinds of talent uh, just all over the place. Brennan Eagles had a nice uh, game number one for Texas, three catches, 59 yards, and a two-touchdown game. But, of course, Devin DuVernay is the fastest of the bunch, so he's going to test the LSU secondary deep. You would expect that they're going to set up a number of plays downfield for DuVernay uh, and set up some plays that will work off uh, the bomb late in the game. Grant Delpit's one of the best players in college football, regardless of position at safety. Uh, Jacoby Stevens, uh, I've heard a number of analysts believe that he could be the spy against Sam Ellinger. And you got Todd Harris as well at safety. Defensive end, uh, Kalevon Chason uh, could be a breakout player this year. He's really good already, but I mean a star, a stud, a guy that just uh, causes havoc, and he's the most uh, legitimate threat off the edge to make life difficult for Sam Ellinger in the passing game. Keontae Ingram is really Texas's one running back of note. They're really thin. They're they're just lacking depth right there, and that's where Ellinger becomes, of course, a factor. So Ellinger kind of bails out the Texas running game. He's been the best Texas running back for the most part for the last three years, uh, but uh, really no depth behind Ingram in terms of experience because they've they they came into the season thin, then they got more injuries at running back. Uh, sophomore linebacker Damone Clark taking over for the great Devin White. Of course, wasn't tested last week. It's going to be intriguing to see how he plays against a Texas offense on a big stage with a running-style quarterback that can threaten the defense. And uh, so he's going to have to take on a number of tasks in the middle for LSU. All right, the two field goal kickers, Cameron Decker and Kate York, both missed field goals last week. One was one for two, one was two for three, I believe, but they both missed field goals last season. My predictions last week, I went 26-2 and two against the money line. I predict all the top 25 games, plus some uh, games outside the top 25 that intrigue me, like North Carolina, South Carolina last week, including this week, Vandy and Purdue. So I predict 28 games last week. Uh, I went 16-11. and 11. I tossed the one push, Notre Dame and Louisville. Uh, so I went 16-11 uh, and 11 against the spread, and I thought I had a horrible bad beat week with uh, Northwestern giving up a touchdown with 12 seconds left when they had the ball on offense. And then also there was another bad beat, or Oregon, of course, against uh, Auburn as well. So 16-11 and 11 will take it, 59% against the spread. That will win you money. Speaking of which, 
Grab the link in the description section below next to the hashtag Sam Strong. That's to get your betting account uh, uh, balance. Get it in there. You get double your money, 100% added to it if you use the promo code MRTVCFB. But to get my picks, go to the link below in the description section. Voice of College Football. Grab the link. Get my picks right there at Mark Rogers TV, the Voice of College Football. All right. We will see you on Saturday all day. We will give you instant analysis and we'll love to talk to you uh, during our many call-in shows right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football.